Hello friends, my name is Mohamed Imran. I am a third year MBBS student. So in this video, we are going to discuss about rabies vaccines. This is a very important topic for second year microbiology exams. So let's start with this topic. Starting with the local treatment. What we should do if an animal or uh, a dog bites you? The first one is the cleaning of wound with soap and water. And we should apply some antiseptics. So the wound care is very important uh, in respective of rabies. And even if a patient reports late. Then also we should do the wound care because the rabies vaccines uh, stays on the skin for a long time. The second uh, important thing is we should not suture the wound. Do not touch the wound with bare hands and we should not apply any irritants like soil, lime etc. And uh, confirmation whether or not the animal is rabid. This is required in category 2 and category 3 risk. We would study about this later. Uh, now let's start with the passive immunization uh, it is given only in category 3 bite we would study about this later and there are two types of passive immunization available the first one is human rabies immunoglobin immune globulin hrig and the second one is equine rabies immune globulin erig in hrig uh, we are we should give a dose of 20 iu per kg dose 20 international units per kg and there are no side effects of HRIG. In case of equine rabies immune, immune globulin ERIG, the dose is 40 IU per kg and it is derived with the help of horse. So its origin is heterogeneous. So we are going to see some side effects like serum sickness. The rabies immune globulin should be administered within 24 hours and maximum up to 7 days. And the passive immunization is only for category 3 bites. We should remember this point now coming to the active immunization that is rabies vaccine the main topic there are two types of active immunization the first one is neural vaccines and the second one is non-neural vaccines starting with the neural vaccines it is derived from the nervous tissue of animals infected with fixed rabies virus it is not used nowadays because it is encephalatogenic poorly immunogenic and we are going to see some neurological complications so it is not used nowadays uh, the examples of neural vaccines are sample vaccine sample vaccine it is derived from infected sheep brain and it is in inactivated with the help of phenol the second one is beta propiolactone BPL vaccine, beta propiolactone vaccine. It is modified version of sample vaccine and the only difference here is the sample vaccine is inactivated with phenol and in case of BPL vaccine, it is inactivated with beta propiolactone. The third one is infant mouse brain vaccine. These are the examples of neural vaccines. Now coming to the non-neural vaccines. The first one here is egg derived, egg derived vaccines and the egg derived vaccines are developed in the allantoic cavity of embryonate, embryonated eggs. The two vaccines that we have to remember by heart is purified duck embryo vaccine PDEV and live attenuated chick embryo vaccine. We have to just remember the names of these vaccines purified duck embryo vaccine and live attenuated chick embryo vaccine. The second one here is recombinant viral vaccine. In recombinant viral vaccine, uh, the vaccinia virus. Vaccinia virus is another virus that carries the rabies surface glycoprotein on its surface. So it is in developmental phase. The third one is the cell culture derived vaccines. These, these are the most important vaccines for rabies. It is highly immunogenic, no neurological complication and the most recommended vaccine and it is in use nowadays. Cell culture derived vaccine. Examples of cell culture derived vaccines the first one is purified chick embryo cell vaccine pcec and it is derived from chicken fibroblast cell line we have to remember these uh, vaccine name the first one is purified chick embryo cell vaccine pcec the second one is purified vero cell line vaccine the simple uh, it is derived from vero cell line pvc and the third one is human diploid cell vaccine hdc and uh, it is derived from wi38 human embryonic lung fibroblast cell line we have to remember these three names the first one is purified chick embryo cell vaccine the second one is purified vero cell line vaccine and human diploid cell vaccine hdc vaccine it is derived from wi38 now coming to the most important 
part of this lecture that is risk categorization and recommended anti rabies prophylaxis given by WHO in 2013. There are three types of categories. The first one is uh, in first category we are going to see the type of contact is touching or feeding of animal licks on intact skin not on uh, injured or on a wound and uh, the type of exposure is none because there is no contact so the management here is none if reliable history is available there is no management in category one then in second category there is nibbling of uncovered skin and minor scratches or abrasion without bleeding there is no bleeding the important part here is in the type of contact of category two there is no bleeding so the type of exposure is minor so the first we have to do the wound care that is wound management and we are going to give anti rabies vaccine no passive immunization here in type in category 2 in category 3 the type of contact is single or multiple transdermal bites or scratches licks on broken skin uh, that is on wound and contamination of mucous membrane with saliva so the type of exposure here is severe and uh, here there is going to be bleeding so same wound management anti rabies vaccine the only new thing that is added is rabies immuno immunoglobulins for protection rapid protection so the other important points related to this category is that the post exposure prophylaxis are not contraindicated in pregnancy lactation infancy old age so there is no contraindication for these uh, vaccines and uh, in immunodeficient individual if a immunodeficient individual has got a category 2 type bite so we are going to give anti rabies vaccine plus immunoglobulin but in a normal person we are only giving anti rabies vaccine now coming to the regimen we have to remember this regimen by heart uh, the first one is the regimen for post exposure prophylaxis just after bite so there are two types of uh, regimen the first one is the IAM regimen it is also called SN regimen so in IAM regimen the injection is going to be intramuscular injection so one dose 0 0.5 ml or 1 ml it is given on 0 3 7 14 and 28 days that's why it is written as 1 1 1 1 1 and uh, in ID regimen that is the second regimen uh, it is also called as thigh red cross schedule uh, in this we are going to give uh, vaccine on two sides that is why it is written as 22202 so 0.1 ml of reconstituted vaccine on two sides per visit on days 0 3 7 28 14 is not there so that's why we are uh, we are seeing zero here the vaccine is given on two sides per visit on days 0 3 7 and 28 potency the potency should be 2.5 iu in im intramuscular injection should have a potency of minimum 2.5 iu that is international unit now coming to the site of injection for post exposure prophylaxis the best one is the deltoid region the gluteal region is contraindicated not preferred because fat retards the absorption of vaccine and in infants and young children we can give the vaccine in anterolateral part of the thigh. Now coming to the uh, regimen for pre-exposure prophylaxis. That is there is no bite. So we are giving uh, this for lab staff, clinicians, vet uh, veterinarians and uh, animal handlers. Only three doses are given in this uh, the on days 0, 7, 21 or 28 days. And if we are giving IM so the dose would be 0.5 ml or intradermal the dose would be 0.1 ml. Now coming to the last regimen for post exposure prophylaxis in previously vaccinated individual. If the bite is severe that is category 3 bite so we are going to give 3 doses on 0, 3 and 7 days. In less severe bite that is category 2 bite or uh, category 2 bite we are going to give two doses on 0 and 3 days and uh, no immuno immune globulins are given in previously vaccinated individuals so there are three regimens the first one is the regimen for post exposure prophylaxis 
the second one is the regimen for pre exposure prophylaxis and the last one is regimen for uh, post exposure prophylaxis in previously vaccinated individual in previously vaccinated individual in severe bites 3 doses and in less severe bites 2 doses on 0 and 3 days and there are no immune globulins for previously vaccinated individuals thank you for watching please like and subscribe for more videos related to medical free